You know, I'm honestly surprised that I've somehow kept up the commitment of making nine separate challenge runs. All of them have been uniquely difficult in their own ways, but I think now I'm going to relax with a bit of a calmer run this time. So, what do we have to slap in for frame number 10? I wonder what that was- OH MY GOD! So for today, the challenge is simple, trying to beat hell is other demons without moving. For our interpretation of not moving, we need to establish a few things. First things first, we can't navigate the map without moving, so for the sake of this video not running for two minutes, we're going to ignore that. Next is the definition of moving in levels, which is a bit of a tricky little thing to really identify. None of the controls explicitly say move in them, so I'm just going to put running left and right as off limits for obvious reasons, along with dive for quick falling, jump for height gaining, and dash for rapid horizontal movement with temporary invincibility. There can be semantical arguments made for the last three, but honestly, it's better to take it all away to not pigeonhole myself into a situation where it is possible, but only if you think about it a certain way. Anyways. With all of that defined and outlined, I can say hello my fellow entities of the interwebs, I am Generic Mystic, and welcome to today's challenge. Okay, crap, wait, I have to somehow make not moving engaging. Uh... To begin our challenge, we start in the Boneyard. There are some hazards here and there in the form of spikes, but the first couple levels are the first couple levels in terms of difficulty. There aren't any real annoyances either, other than us being unable to dodge any of the projectiles that come our way. But that's just game mechanics for you. What these easy levels mean is that we can easily get through both Bridge and Trident, and while Uneven does give some difficulty due to the limited space to not fall into spike pits, it can be managed well enough. Ceiling and traps, however, pose an interesting problem in that the bone spears that spawn move a bit out of reach for our weapon, and while yes, we can wait for them to move close, Eh, I'm not ready to do anything drastic yet, so I'll wait the time that it takes and just move on. With these levels beaten, we reach the first junction and come to a choice. On one path, we can continue the regular levels, while on the other, we have our first boss. Given how boring this has been so far, I'm inclined to fight a big bad. After an initial wave of enemies, we meet the Oppressor. The boss will start flying around shooting projectiles, but after taking 100 damage, we'll switch to firing three horizontal lasers before leaving for an intermission phase. The problem is that the boss will match their height in the arena with where we are, which is directly on top of us since we can't leave the platform. This means that we have no choice, so the illusion of choice brings us to Onslaught, which... Not a lot of platform here. But given that it is Boneyard, the levels are usually easy, and Bone Spears are way too high up, and there are too many to dodge with what we have, so we are walled here too. Good thing there's a shop system in this game. We have a slew of upgrades that we could get here, but the only ones that really matter for us are the Plastic Heart for an additional hit point, True Aim for better consistency with shot spread, and Bullet Grease for the important part, Extra Range. Using these three, we can manage to beat the previously tackled level that gave us trouble. Going back to the Oppressor, we are able to just barely survive through the three lasers, bringing us to the intermission phase with enemies. After that comes the same as phase one, but we lose due to not really having the health to survive any further. With that established, we only have one way to go, and it's a level called... Floorless. 
So the main issue with this level is that the very small platform we are on is jank and has bad collision to slide on, effectively making us immobile unless we angle our gun in a very specific way to slide back to the middle of the platform. Thankfully, the level itself isn't too bad, with the toughest group of enemies being three arc demons that an ultimate can be saved for, so they can be quickly cleared. Upon defeating the last of the regular Boneyard levels, we gain access to the second shop of a run, and wow are there some must-have upgrades to get. The ones that we really care about are Trigger Happy for an increased DPS rate and the Real Heart for a whopping three additional hit points. The problem is that they are exorbitantly expensive. Just those two upgrades will be 13,500 gems, which is a pain to grind for without being able to defeat a boss, and given that there's always the potential that we might need to buy something else pricey in the future, I am going to be a nutcase and go for an entirely different upgrade than the ones I mentioned first. The Gem Magnet. For 7,000 gems, we can get what is essentially a full map gravitational pull on all gems dropped by enemies when not firing a weapon, which will help a ton with grinding. The problem is, well, getting the gems needed for that. Making an attempt at progression, we try our hands at the Pusworks levels, and it shows that we have no business being in there without the upgrades previously mentioned, so it kinda leaves us with one option. Spending 40 minutes in Onslaught because it has the highest gem yield rate from the combination of high value enemies and natural terrain that funnels the gems towards the player. And it is only after that and buying the upgrades for slots for the upgrades and equipping them that we can enter the boss fight against the oppressor with any amount of confidence. In phase one, we only get hit once. In phase two, we manage to somehow chain bounces off the boss going straight into the ceiling spikes, but avoiding lasers, effectively taking half the damage. In the intermission, we take one hit from a flyball, and then in the final phase, we manage to eke out a win at one health. With that, we can collect the gem from the oppressor and complete one of the four main objectives on the map. Given our previous troubles with Pusworks without the upgrades, I think it's only natural that we revisit it with all of our new special powers. We do face some troubles from the new exploding jellies and the ambiguous object spewers, but we can get through it. Next is another junction, and between a lot of levels and a mandatory boss at the end of the path, I think going to the ladder and into the level called Sides is the better option. Entering the level, we see the obvious obstacle as the name implies, but it just doesn't deal damage? Well, that makes things a lot easier. Well, I would say that if it weren't for the familiar issue of enemies being too far to reach, but also like before we can just sort of wait for them to be close to the center of the arena as indicated by where their projectiles are going downwards and just barely hit them to move on, nearly lose to a flyball, and clear the level. With that, it is time that we make it to the second boss of our run, the Lurker. Given a few attempts though, it is clear that not being able to move out of the way of a large serpent-like creature eating us and dragging our body down into the green sludge is too big of a problem to ignore. No matter what pattern the boss starts with, it will lead to our demise. Because we need to defeat this boss to get to the final area, it leaves us with two options, either outmaneuver or outdamage. Given that we have no means of moving effectively... <sighs> Alright, I have a plan. Looking at the design of the Lurker, we can see that the boss is divided into segments, with each one independent of each other and the damage that they can take. This means that if we have a weapon with piercing properties, we could hit multiple of these segments at a time, thus multiplying the damage we could inflict per shot with our weapon. On screen now is every weapon available in the game for us. Of these, the weapons now remaining are the only ones with piercing properties. And of these, the ones that are still here are the ones that we could potentially get right now 
as in a store not beyond the Infernal Gateway. Immediately, I can rule out the Claw. These things are terrible for the boss and lack the range to even effectively pierce, so into the recycle bin it goes. Next up is the boomerang, which has too low of a fire rate to get rid of the boss before being taken under the liquid. The same also applies for the chain lightning. While a really cool weapon concept, the damage it outputs with the rate of fire it has is not good enough. This leaves the Zeus Fulmination. This weapon is one of the best to take into Endless and Arcade mode, and for good reason. High damage and pierce cleans out hordes of enemies, so it'd be the best chance of victory should we get our hands on it. In order to get the weapon, we just need to get to the shop down in the lab area, so let's get over to it. We only have three levels in the way, and the first of these is a doozy called Leaky. This is by far one of the longest levels in the game without an additional challenge, and we once again meet the problem of enemies too far to reach. Once again though, they eventually move back in range, so there's no need to fix what isn't broken. Sadly though, the hordes of enemies become a bit too overwhelming for us to handle, and we lose. This time though, I want to actually do something that'll maybe make this go a little faster, so I'll just get a different weapon. Between the twin shooter and the wave gun that are available, the latter is the one that I will stick with, mainly because the other one didn't work when I tried. This weapon in particular is very special for us, because get this, it actually has farther reach than our default gun. That means all those moments where I complained about not reaching enemies could have been avoided, but oh well, it doesn't really matter. We can clear through the enemies with a little trouble, and move on to Bouncy. Okay, so, uh, th there is absolutely no way we are going to beat this level. Absolutely zero. There's a lot of things I can do in this game right now, but staying in air for more than half a second is not one of them. It looks like we have to go the long way around. <sighs> Just for completion's sake, we beat both geysers and slime, enter the infernal gateway, and... Uh, uh... We can't move to the right to get to the gateway itself, even with the different weapons we have available to us. No upgrades can help us either. We're stuck. There's nothing that we can do to get through this mini level, so I guess that's it for our challenge run. Goodbye. Oh, okay then. We enter the factory area and clear through most of the levels with no problem. The wave gun makes quick work, and the shot... Eh. The only really useful thing here is the shield, which won't negate the first hit that you would take, regardless of the amount of damage. The hitbox is larger than the player though, so be careful if anything gets close. This will help on some levels, in case you don't want to get knocked into a pit of salt place, but who would ever fall victim to that even with the shield equipped? <laughs> Fun fact, by the way. Both the Twin Shooter and Wave Gun have zero recoil when fired, so they are really our only option in this level named Quad. Anywho, we blast through the rest of Factory and enter the lab. The first level is not noteworthy in the slightest, so let's skip over to Slice. This level features sharp spikes below that deal 3 damage if landed on and laser guns above that slice through the air and directly onto their corresponding platforms. Given that we can't move from recoil with the wave gun, we unfortunately have to switch back to our default for this level and fight with being moved around on a small platform. As it turns out, this is a really hard thing to do. Even with the plastic heart, real heart, and shield, everything coming at us with no wiggle room makes this honestly harder than anything we've previously faced in terms of execution. With enough patience and tries though, we can beat it, defeat Divide, which guards the shop, and finally purchase the Zeus Fulmination. All that is left is to take on the Lurker, to which we see that we are able to beat the boss, but are unable to stay on the platform, so it is a loss. Okay, I need to magic up a solution here. 
In order for this boss fight to be possible, we need the initial boss attack to be on the left side of the arena so that we can get in a lot of damage at the start and then effectively stunlock the boss under the liquid as it switches phases to win. My best suggestion is to shoot the enemies and a little bit more to see if it maybe manipulates RNG in a way to make it work. Which, yeah, I know that sounds really stupid, but I did get results. Anywho, with that we beat the Lurker, collecting the second of the gemstones we need. Swinging back around to the labs, we make our way down through the remaining levels. Some don't pose too much of a challenge like Scratch and Diagonals, however the level named Solitary would like a word with us. Well, it would appear that we met our match. Like with Floorless, we spawn on ground that gets taken away from us soon after, leaving no reachable spot safe to get to in time. Instead, we are just going to plummet into the spikes every time. Oh, but alright, I guess they only damage you once instead of the much more understandable alternative of death. An important thing to note with these spikes, given that we are standing on top of them, is that the game seems to only check if we land on them to trigger the damage. This check passes, though, if we use an ultimate, so try not to utilize whichever you have in this level. After defeating everything from below, we can already proceed to the third boss of our run, the Luminous. The boss has a variety of attacks, three phases, and increasingly difficult terrain as the fight goes on. Our first attempt goes as well as first attempts go, but a fall into some spikes abruptly ends it. The second attempt goes well enough to defeat the boss, which means that we get the third gem. Uh, okay, maybe if I use the wave gun? Well, we have reached a roadblock. We can't gain height, meaning we can't collect the gem, meaning we can't properly beat the boss. We can't out DPS the boss either to defeat and drop onto the gem simply because we don't have a way to slow or falling enough for the boss to die and the gem to spawn before we hit the ground, and we don't have a fast enough attack rate on any of our weapons to win like that anyways. But what if we could hurt the boss before the fight even began? In order to capitalize on the boss being there, we need to actually reach it with our projectiles. Upon spawning in, we can damage it with the wave gun and Zeus Fulmination very briefly, but that range becomes too little after dropping down to the ground. We'd need to somehow reach even further than we could with the wave gun, leaving really only one option available to us, the minigun. Pairing our newly acquired firearm with the bullet grease ensures that we can damage the boss before the fight actually begins, but, uh... Hold on, I need this heavy upgrade to make the recoil tolerable to have. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the laser machines have something to say about us destroying the boss. We can take some hits, but eventually we will need to take care of the enemies. Once they're dealt with, though, we can turn our attention back to the boss, potentially dropping it below 100 HP, but most likely only below 200. After that, it's as simple as defeating the boss, and it's still too high. If we defeat the boss too soon in the phase switch, the floor won't break away. If we defeat the boss after the floor breaks, it takes too long for the gem to spawn, having us fall down to the ground and end up back where we were before we got the minigun. Yeah, I'm a bit stuck. I can keep beating the boss again and again, but nothing I do will get the gem. I guess for a consistency thing we can get the rarely used laser proof upgrade to absorb some hits from the laser snipers at low HP, but that doesn't really solve our problem here. Well, uh, we got the gem, but what happened? Well, I could be wrong about this, but from an observational standpoint, the gem the boss drops physically moves to a set point and level at a really fast speed. 
the collision to grab the gem seems to be active as the gem is moving or something like that. So if you were able to place yourself directly between the gem and the point it would go to, you could grab it as it travels down. Again though, this is all educated speculation on my part, so it could very well be wrong. Either way, we have defeated three of the four bosses with the way to the last of them right there in front of us. But I put this one off for last for a reason. It's impossible. You need both horizontal and vertical momentum in order to keep going beyond the first hundred or so HP, which we just can't get for this challenge. And even if we can somehow defeat the boss before clearing the gap, we still need a way to get up in the Infernal Gateway in order to progress on to the final area of the game. And even then, if we somehow get past both of them, the final boss of the game has a hard wall for us in the form of a time-sensitive vertical climb to get to the credits. So that's it. I can confidently 100% say in this moment that no, it is not possible to beat hell as other demons without movement keys. Only in this moment, though. All right, I I need to figure out how to downgrade version for this game. Have the game with the depot ID, the manifest, all that. Uh, now pick the one with your game ID, app ID, which for Hell is Other Demons, app ID 595790. I probably want to go for the oldest available one. Okay, no frickin' clue. I'm just gonna fire it, see if it does anything. B20190417. There's no mouse movement yet. Crap. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. When was mouse aiming? May 4th, 2020. 2020 May 4th, or isn't one. But the Steam article says February 1st of 2021, but it was actually August 26, 2020. Now we wait again. Yeah, this is the um, aim patch. With this patch, get this beauty back again. It's time for the end of our run. We have five levels and a final boss ahead of us, so let's get right into it. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth off, we have all the main levels in Inferno. It is no secret at this point that the minigun on this version completely obliterates the challenge. We can fly and shoot to our heart's content, defeating all the enemies and avoiding all the hazards that dare to try and stand in our way of victory. After that is the final boss of the game, the Stale. Our weapon isn't an instant free win for this level, so we need to use some strategy here and there. The best time to deal damage is when the boss is trying to slam into the ground at us, as it leaves a very predictable place for the boss to be at, along with the place we can be to avoid all the damage. Once phase 2 hits, just move up in time with the claw swipes and repeat phase 1. Upon dropping the boss health to zero, fly up in style to the exit portal, clearing the final boss. With that, we have beaten the entire game. Every single level in the game has been beaten without movement keys, bundled together with a bunch of cheese, different weapons and abilities, and even a downgraded version. But I need to be honest with you.
well, yes, it is absolutely true that we have proven every level possible without movement keys. That isn't the entire story. There's been plenty of levels with a variety of challenges, from the side-scroller of the Devourer to the lack of floor and bouncy. But there is something I left out that dwarfs both of them. Something we can't use minigun flight for. Something we can't use premature gem grabbing for. And something that we can't use any special weapon, ultimate, or upgrade in the game to triumph. My fellow entities of the interwebs, let me take you to the end of our journey. And what better way to end than the beginning? There is no way to beat the tutorial to progress on to the rest of the game. While the first two gems are collectible, the third one on the platform is not. I've tried to fly with recoil, pause to maybe do additive bounce physics to make it fall off the platform to me, and preemptively hold the spacebar going into the level to maybe have slow fall, but none have worked. With that, we must sadly say no, definitively this time, that it is not possible. But now that we've established this, without a doubt, I want to at least entertain a thought. I know I swore off in the beginning no uh, semantical arguments or pigeonholing. But I at least want to see what I can do. So, <clears throat> we can all universally agree that the typical WASD of keyboards is, without a doubt, movement keys. But, and this is a huge but hinged on nothing but semantics, does jumping really count as moving? Well... Going off of Captain Freefall Starbound Without Moving video that I totally haven't ripped a ton of inspiration from, please don't hurt me. The consensus there is that jumping is not a movement key, so let's just roll with it for the time being and see what else I can actually do for the heck of it. After getting the third gem, we can reach the dash part of the tutorial, and well, yes, I can do the heavy semantical thing of saying that dashing isn't really a movement key either, it will have completely ruined the narrative impact of the devourer arc of the video, so I'm gonna say no. But other than dashing, there are no options. The laser is a wall that we cannot go over or under, so there is nothing- Hold on there a moment! I drag this challenge run back from the dregs of ruin by downloading another version, and I'll do it again if I have to. Interestingly, there was an update to the game on June 20th, 2021, but it was never noted in the patch notes. Had uh, most people done this challenge run, they would have completely ignored this patch. After all, it was such an insignificant update that it didn't even bear mentioning in both the patch notes or the Steam updates for the game. But I was actively playing when that shadow patch came out. And let me tell you, it broke everything in the campaign for the nine days it was live. To put it simple, they accidentally removed the collision at the edges of the screen on every level in the campaign. Using this, we can get out of bounds in the tutorial and straight into some spikes. Testing to see if dying does anything for progression, and... no. Just had to be sure. If we keep jumping after getting hit, we can eventually get to a point where we won't take damage anymore. Additionally, the lasers can't reach us, so that's that obstacle out of the way. After the Walls of Doom are lesser demons to give the tutorial for shooting, and... Huh? Alright, so from what I can tell, we are perpetually falling the moment we are no longer getting hit by the spikes. Falling off the left edge is an immediate no-go, and while falling off the right does eliminate some of the enemies, the third gets stuck anyways, so that leaves us without a solution again. Doing some testing, it's clear that after a certain point of being out onto the spikes, you'll be out of range of the laser walls, but even then, we can't really utilize that as we are physically unable to aim in the opposite direction to maybe get us back onto a safe platform. 
So now, and forgive me for this footage for how hard it will be to see the gameplay. Hold on, let me zoom in real quick. There we go. Just a bit lower quality than normal. All right, so now we will go into windowed mode and change the resolution to be as small as possible. What this does is not readily apparent, but by holding down left click or our fire button and dragging it off of the game window, we get the ability to fire in that off-screen portion and get back onto the platform. So now comes another problem. We fall too fast to get back to safety, and hitting the spikes resets our progress on the laser wall section of the tutorial. Utilizing the still present additional vertical recoil, mixed with holding the spacebar for slow fall, we can aim diagonally just to barely get out of the way of the laser and still have enough time to get back to solid ground. Our final obstacle is that the laser walls progressively get faster as they go long. They gave us less time to replicate the jumping, recoil, and trickery needed to bypass them, but the final wall lets us go on anyways, even after getting hit. From there, we blast some enemies, pick up the ultimate charge, fire off a deadly laser, and finally, finally clear the tutorial, and with that, the entire game. So to answer a question of can you beat hell as other demons without movement keys, it will simply boil down to if you consider jumping to be a movement key or not. But regardless of your opinion, I think what was able to be accomplished here was just phenomenal. With all that said though, we are at the end of the video. For credits, the music I used will be in the description in the order it was used. All bugs and glitches were ones I discovered on my own accord. Shoutouts to SteamDB for making this run possible with the data needed for downloading the older versions, and an obligatory go watch Captain Freefall, I think the videos there are better than the ones here. Here I'd normally say the whole like, comment, subscribe, bell thing, and while yes, you can do that if you want, I'm going to instead ask that you share this to other people if you enjoyed it. This video doing the rounds is how I get motivated to know I'm doing something right here, so please do that if you wish. I have been Generic Mystic, and I thank you once more for joining me on this wild ride through hell. Until we meet again, on the interwebs.